Hey, morning. How's it going? We're here for Senior Yoga with me, Ricky Stewart. Let's talk about what we're going to do because we're early yet. I'm not going to get into the action just yet. I want to get some kind of the way that I think, the way that I teach mobility and where I teach strength and where I teach fitness. Our body has lots of teams in our joints, in our muscles. They work as teams to do movements. So when you take a stride, your foot connects first and then your ankle and your knee then your hips and your lower back and you, you can really imagine there's lots of things going on all those things working as a big team and they all fire at the same time find a bit of tension catch tension and you propel yourself forward in a locomotive fashion which is cool now part of those teams are weak just because just because you've done more movements with one side or you've taken this every time you take the stairs you pick up the same leg first one side will get good at the stability to hold you up as you pick up that foot the other side will get good at lifting your body weight as you pick up because it, over the years you do more reps with that now part of those teams start to get a little bit lazy because the strong stuff will just override and just do the thing and your body will catch stability in the easiest place that it can catch stability the best example of this that I can think of to show you what I'm talking about is when people's Hips favour internal rotation loads more. So every time something's hard, the hip you try and push through the hip, through the lower back, through the legs, through the whole system. This hip goes beep, and magnet is magnetic to internal rotation. It's found stability here because this bit of the team, this muscle on the outside of your bum, couldn't deal. So somewhere else had to pick up the slack. And you've got internal rotation every time. And sometimes it's really obvious, like when I get, if uh, I'm in a class and there's box jumps and someone goes to jump and their knees, like as they jump, go like this and they don't squat like that, they can tell themselves to squat when it's slow enough. As soon as it goes ballistic, as soon as it goes maximum power, the body's like, mm, you're not getting all this stuff from here, pulls this knee out. We're going to just magnetic to internal rotation. I want to see if I can separate that stuff out. So... We can train this stuff in your hip to be able to be strong enough to be able to take load so that when you walk weird, step on uneven surfaces, you're walking on a big bank, all of the systems, all of the little parts of the team can all pull their own weight and move you around so that you work better. It's complicated. The more I talk, the more I realise that I'm going down this rabbit hole of explaining how humans move around. I know we're not here for that, just for a lesson in teaching of how the body works. We're here to do some movement and some mobility so that you can improve what you've got. And that's what I'm here for too. So, we're about on time, pretty much. Let's get started. And if you just sit either on the floor or on the end of a chair or on the end of the sofa so that your bum's like right on the edge so you're not sitting back and kind of relaxing and collapsing back into reclining. I need you to be in control of your limbs but you can just soften at the same time as well. Now, if we're going to talk about hips, your lower back is involved because it's part of the team that makes you move, that you move around. I want the hip to be able to do all of its jobs as well as it can. I want the lower back to be able to do all of its jobs as well as it can. So just have a little feel around this, however you're seated, so you could be even cross-legged and it's fine. But this is my favourite to check in with this. If you just sit up tall, there's no such thing as good posture because I want you to be able to move around. I want you to sit wherever your habit lies. So just sit and just see. See where your spine is. See where your hips are. See where your feet are. And just breathe. Now, your breathing apparatus, all the muscles around your belly, they're part of the system that moves your spine. So if you just breathe here, you can feel like there's nothing in the way, there's nothing stopping you from breathing. Try and breathe just in through your nose. Then do this little side bend that I enjoy because it helps us be able to move. And feel what your pelvis is doing on the seat. See if you can tune in to whether or not your pelvis is tilting, moving, changing anything. You squeeze ribcage down to one side, squeeze ribcage down to one side. 
breathe. Then I want you to hold your breath. Breathe all the way in. And try and be strong as you hold your breath just for a few seconds. And it changes things because your ribs have expanded, your belly's expanded to get that air in. Then breathe all the way out. And it's different again. Holding your breath with no air, without your lungs inflated changes things and then go back to just breathing and then to rotate your chest so if you put your hands on opposite shoulders keep your face looking forward so you keep looking at me and you try and squeeze a bit further into rotation and what your hips doing your knees like falling inwards keep rotating that's it and then been really enjoying this because it changes things, it helps us. In fact, let's do it standing. So if you can come up to standing, we're going to do rotation plus side bend. The best way I can get you to do this well is to put your thumbs on your shoulders and keep them there. Make a straight line from elbow to elbow and reach this left elbow down as far as you can. Your hips are going to stay still because I want thoracic rotation plus lateral flexion. So you point one elbow forwards, one elbow back. Point the other elbow forwards, other elbow back. And you keep this side bend. So if you sweep this left elbow past the floor, past the floor, past the floor, past the floor, like that, I'm going to keep this straight line going from elbow to elbow. I want to see if you can perform in side bend like this. And then see if you can, because this is hard, see if you can balance at the same time. And it's down to your hip stability, knee stability, your footprint, your foot stability. So whether or not you can do this. And it's locomotive. Because when you even if we're not going back to running, if you never if you if your running days are over, still locomotion is the same. Walking is running slower, essentially. So I want you to be able to get your body to sway a little bit from side to side so your thoracic spine can rotate and you can catch this tension and also that you teach your spine that it can hold tension wherever you put it. There's no places out of bounds where it's, if you do something weird and you're like this or you're carrying something heavy you're like this, your spine can deal because it's been here and it's articulated and it knows how to look after itself. Nothing like oh, grips on tight and pulls or gets injured or explodes or whatever happens. So. Practice on this side. Thumbs on your shoulders, straight line from elbow to elbow, lean over, this elbow points forwards, this elbow points forwards. So you keep this side bend and all your weight goes through this right foot. And your hips try and stay still. So we'll try and separate out thoracic spine from lumbar spine from hips. That's it. Then see if you can do this balanced. That's it. Keep this moving. And just breathe kind of normally, kind of nicely. Yes. There we go. And then we're getting some hip cars. Now, I'm going to have to balance a little bit. So if you want to hold yourself up against a piece of furniture, I've got my standing leg is going to be this leg closest to the sofa. My hand's going to go here. I want you to see if you can move this femur separate from your pelvis, separate from your lower back. Because the femur sits in the pelvis, the hip socket is in the pelvis. So if you put your thumb just on your lower back and pick this knee up, go knee out. Don't let your torso turn. Pick this heel up, drag this knee back until knee's in line with the other knee. Knee to knee, knee up. So before we get into any stretches, I want to know how well you move and I want to know how well you can understand your movement. So that if you do this shared out between the whole system, it means you probably lean back, lean out, lean to the side, and you get all this big movement like this, which is all fine, but I can tell, because I do this a lot, that this femur in its hip socket isn't getting trained anymore kind of staying still, the standing leg 
is sharing out the load. Neither are getting the end range conditioning that I'm after. That's it. And the last one. Cool. And then spin around. And try this on the other side. So you can use the sofa to hold on to any piece of furniture that you want. I want to see whether you can tell whether or not you're moving this femur separate from lower back. Knee comes up, out, you look, knee back, knee to knee. Breeze. That's it. Keep this moving, keep tuning into it. So you'll notice I've got my hand here on quadratus lumborum. So this muscle just above your hip, above piriformis. I'm trying to see whether or not that is trying to override me just trying to separate out my hip. The last one. Perfect. And then we'll go for shoulder stuff. Now shoulders are the same as hips. Elbows are the same as knees. Ankles are the same as wrists and fingers are the same as toes. Just a little bit different. You get that on the both ball and socket joints, hip and shoulder. And it's the same thing. The way that your humerus, this bone here, uh, interacts with the glenoid joint, which interacts with the with the rib cage, with the shoulder blade, with the spine. It's the same. If you move your shoulder and you have to move everything with it to be able to take your shoulder where it wants to go, the spaces that aren't available to you, that are if you pat if someone grabs hold of your arm and pulls it back, it'll go there, but you don't have the connection. I want you to have the connection to everywhere. So if I come up to the camera a little bit close, because you only need to see top half of my body. So, look at my chest, shoulder to shoulder, it's facing you. I'm not gonna rotate at all. Pick your arm up, drag it back as far as it goes. And see how I haven't changed anything in my torso. I'm also not going into back bend to do this like this. So I'm keeping this little bungee rope from sternum to belly button, pulls down. Point your thumb across your head, point your thumb forwards, and we drag this down and back. Check in with it here, that your thumb is trying to point backwards and you're trying to drag your arm back. Reach it back and keep it high. See how it's still trying to stay high? And there's this corner here. And I'm trying to turn my thumb up the way as this way. And then reach it up your back, straighten it out, turn it around into external rotation as far as it goes, and drag it up and back, up and back, across your cheek, across your chest. It's back here. And swing it forwards, point your thumb across your head, point your thumb down, drag it down and back. And I realised that all of those cues are very specific to which way your thumb's pointing and things like that. It's kind of hard to follow. You've got to allow yourself to not quite get it right. Which is why I'm quite happy to show you this without me telling you what I'm doing, talk about other stuff. So you can start learning how to move this arm, this wrist, this elbow, wherever you want it to go, without having to have visual cues to tell you what it is that you're doing. And there's got to be some force involved here. There we go, that'll do. And by force, I don't mean just gravity, because that's force, that's something that you can fight against. You've got to put force in to be able to teach these tissues how to be a shoulder. I should have said before we started that, that if you have a sore shoulder, if you have something that doesn't work in there, something a bit niggly, something a bit painful, you can limit this. So your shoulder cars could look like this. And if you can get through that without pain, that's cool. If you get it to here and it hurts, don't do that. Just avoid it for a bit, but still move this shoulder around as much as you can with as much input into how you're controlling these muscles. So an empty swing around like this where it's all momentum, I kind of pick it up and let it swing, let it pick it up and let it swing, that doesn't do anything because there's no input. I'm not learning anything from moving it. You're not doing yourself much harm either if it doesn't hurt, but I want you to be able to connect to it and irradiate strength through this shoulder. So let's get into it. So pick this up, point your thumb across your head. I'll call them lampshade. Point your hand forwards, drag it back. Don't turn your chest, keep this little bungee rope, sternum to belly button, 
and drag it down and back. Chip up your back, straighten out. Turn this thumb back, up, cross. Change direction. My left arm is nowhere near as good as my right. So I've got to tell myself to slow this stuff down and get connected to it more and more and more and more. That's it. I'm trying to learn how to articulate this and I'm putting input into all of these muscles and there's got to be that input. Without the input, nothing changes. Without, if I just swing this around like this, you can see it's empty, even if I do it slow like that. I'm not really trying that hard. There's got to be that effort so that your shoulder becomes a shoulder again. Okay, let's go further into shoulder stuff. You go straight arms, and shoulders down. If you're not sure about shoulders down, go like this, go like this. You've got shoulders blades forwards, shoulder blades back. Shoulder blades forwards, shoulder blades back. You're making shoulder blades slide on your back. Trying to keep shoulders down. Trying to really force elbows to stay straight, to stay straight because they're going to want to bend because every time you pull shoulder blades together, you've probably been like this. So your body is, that's the map. You want to teach it that you're in control Holding these shoulder blades down, moving, so that we get a little bit of circulation into our trapezius, into these muscles here on the back of our shoulders that hold so much tension when we work on computers and sit around too long. The more circulation, less tension. Because that circulation can bring in the good stuff, bring in the oxygen, pull out all the waste stuff that's going to get dragged back through the venous system to the heart and it gets filtered out along the way. Then you work better. Okay, and let's go into, into neck stuff. I'm going to try and keep with this neck stuff because people's necks are certainly very vulnerable and they don't have to be. It's not a done deal. You can teach your neck muscles in your neck how to perform by making them perform. But again, it's very important that you realize what you started with today, turned up with right now, how your neck works, and we improve on it a little bit. And then we do that again next time. And we improve it again next time. You can't be like, oh, it hurts, but I've got to crank it a bit more because that doesn't get you anywhere. It'll just, you'll end up hurting yourself. And necks are vulnerable if they feel vulnerable. You should absolutely pay attention to that. So, cross your arms. I like this because it locks my shoulder blades in place and I can feel with my fingertips that I've got my shoulders down. Make your neck as long as you can. And keep this closing angle side long. See how you can see both of my ears? I'm looking forwards as I squeeze a little further over this way. Hold. And then try and rotate. 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 Remember your eyes will trick you in so much. So if I try and keep looking at the camera, I perform differently. My eyes will trick me into thinking I've gone to end range and I haven't. So I'm trying to get this stuff to perform while it's lengthened this stuff to form while it's shortened, but there's seven joints in your neck, in your cervical spine. You could do this like this, look, I'm all crunched up. See how my neck's kind of disappeared here. That is a different movement to this. And you'll probably hear stuff moving around. You'll hear it clicking, doing little weird grindy noises and unless it hurts that's okay because it's just really close to your ears that's why you can hear it keep this going I'm trying to feel what it feels like to move your neck with this closing angle, staying kind of long and see what it feels like when you do it short like this where you've actually collapsed that bit down. Very good. 
go. Let's just leave it at that because that's a fair amount of work for your neck and you need to move slow so you don't get dizzy. You need to appreciate when things feel vulnerable. They probably are vulnerable. Okay. Now let's get into a bit of hamstring stretching. Good stuff. Let's do it standing, shall we? So you've got options. I would stand sideways on your sofa like this. So you've got the inside of your leg up against the sofa and we straighten this leg like this. And you can have a little bend in this standing leg and show me this. I know I can't see you, but just humour me. Show me that you can do a little bounce and then tense your bum hard on this standing leg. Put your hand on your lower back and as you hinge forwards, work out where you're hinging from. Now, if you're flexible, you can have this a bit higher. I'm happy to have it here. But if you want, you can have your foot on the sofa or you could go somewhere in between because you could stack cushions up underneath your foot you'd find somewhere in between. Or if you've just got a stool or something, like a little bit lower than the sofa, that works too. Now, I want you to put your hand on your lower back and feel what it feels like to just bring your belly forwards just a little bit. Just a little bit, a little bend in this standing leg. And look for this feeling of stretching in here. We're training this standing leg as well. Remember, if, you, if you've got into this and you're like, I can't hold this, this leg's burnt out, this hip's sore, or anything, you can just sit, do it like this, and it's the same deal. But I wanna see if we can train this standing stuff, if we can, if you've got the capacity to stand, let's stick with it. Have a look at which way your knee's pointing. Is your knee trying to point in across your body? Try and keep it pointing up, and look for this feeling of stretching here. Now there's nothing wrong with doing a hamstring stretch like this, but look at my spine. My spine is curled around, to try and find extra range. I'm not after that. After you staying long and keeping yourself tall and getting this little crease in the hip flexor here, pull forward, a little soft bend in this standing leg, and shoulders down. And breathe. Short breaths. Okay, now I need you to be able to get strong here so that you earn what you've got. Start driving your heel down into the sofa and make this hamstring work and keep pushing. Keep pushing and get stronger. Maybe even make a fist, gritty teeth, do a little short tension breaths because without force, nothing changes. Force is the language of cells and I'm trying to change you at a cellular level so that you can make strength happen. So no surprises, if you nearly fall over, your body can absorb that force and redirect it into you standing upright. So keep driving this heel down. Now, when I say as hard as you can, it's as hard as you can with your capacity. My heart, is crushing this so far, I'm really trying. For you, you might just be making this foot a bit heavy. That's fine. This hip's got to work as well because this is doing the stability, it's holding you up. Hold, 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 and sit up. Now, let's do this like this. Sit down. I want you to just put your back up against the arm of the sofa. Have this foot here, push through this foot, and we'll just lift this foot just a little bit. Only in 10, or after you being able to like fold it right up here and fold in half, I just want you to connect to this hip flexor. <coughs> Excuse me. Connect to this hip flexor and lift just a little bit. And hold. And see if you can tune in to what it feels like to have this hip flexor on your hamstring flexibility. If you can, keep this on, so keep lifting your foot and then hinge forwards and you'll find an end that you can't get any further and hold it there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Three, two, one, and then just see if you can stretch. It's perfect. So, same again. Spin around. We're putting our foot on the sofa so you can have it here and hinge like this, which is fine. Or you could have a cushion under your heel, or you could sit like this, or you can have it right up on the arm of the sofa here. And obviously the shape of your sofa dictates what is available to you as well. But any of these is fine. Make sure this is a little bend in it. Make sure your standing leg has a little bend in it, so do a little bounce. And then put your hand here on the side of your bum and see if you can feel your bum tense. See if you can push your big toe down. And then hinge forwards, just a little bit. Shoulders down, and breathe. I'm just hanging out in this hamstring stretch. It should be passive. So we're passively stretching this stuff here, all this meat on the underside of your thigh. 
breathe. And if you want, if you're flexible enough, maybe you could go fingertips on the arm of the sofa. But I want you to try and avoid curling over like this and see if you can get chest to stay upright. start driving our heel down. You're going to try and own the strength here. You're going to try and get this tissue here to contract against the sofa. So when you push your heel down, push harder. Hinge forwards a little bit, push harder. Hinge forwards a little more, push harder. Tense your bum muscle on this standing leg and keep driving this heel down. Find that strength. Keep pushing, keep pushing. And breathe, keep pushing, keep breathing and pushing, keep breathing and pushing. Go in three, two, one. That is so good. And then bring yourself back down and seated. Maybe put your lower back up against here. So you've got something to stop you from kind of leaning back to lift this up. Sit up as tall as you can and persuade this leg that it can lift. And it's just low level. We're not asking for like digging in deep, just speaking to this hip flexor and showing it that it can do this. My favourite analogy that I'll keep on repeating every yoga class probably for the rest of my life, it's like being able to play an instrument. If you know someone who can play guitar, their fingers are strong enough to hold those strings down in lots of different patterns. And they can do it, and they can hold it and move it, hold it and move it, while the other hand does timing, and possibly while they're singing at the same time. I want you to be able to make these muscles work like that, but right now it might feel like loads of effort to keep this on, but eventually this hip flexor has the endurance to be able to deal. And it might take a bit of load off of your lower back. Because if you think about what I'm trying to stop you to do, which is to crank back to lift this, your lower back isn't part of making your hip flexor work. It can be, and it's not wrong for it to be, but it's not the only way. This hip flexor can work independently of this stuff, and it works with the muscles in your belly. And then show yourself this stretch and see if you can keep trying to lift this foot up. In three, two, one. There we go. Okay, so let's try going for a little thigh stretch. I've got loads of options for this because I know we've all got different stuff going on. You can do it standing. It's probably my least favourite way to do it, but if you can, grab hold of your foot like this and hold it and just live in this stretch. I'd much prefer it this way, lying on your belly, one leg at a time, because I have got feedback from the floor as to what shape my body is in. So if you are uh, doing your right leg, you bring your left arm across your body, curl up that right leg, grab hold of it, hold it like this. You could also do this with a belt. So if you have a belt, you put it around your foot so you've got a bit more space if you can't get this heel back all the way here, you can use a belt grab hold, you can pull with that belt to pull that foot in a bit closer. While you're in this, looking for this feeling of stretching down the front of your thigh, I want you to understand where your hip is. So if you pull your heel out the outside of your body, that's internal rotation of the hip. If you bring it across your body this way, it's external rotation. But somewhere that fits just right. And also, I want you to know that your lower back isn't cranking up to give you space to be able to do this. So if you try and push your hips down into the floor. It's like you're trying to lengthen this bit here. So if you see my t-shirt crunch up as I do this, that isn't it. I'm trying to lengthen that out. I don't know if you can tell that I'm like pushing my hips down into the floor and living in this stretch. And just hold. And hold and breathe, hold and breathe. Work out where your shoulders are. Maybe push this front hand into the floor. And then again, we get good at creating load and creating something to push against. So when you push your foot into your hand and your hand into your foot, you should be able to feel the muscles in your thigh contract. Hold this here. Hold, hold. And breathe. Feel your breathing as you push your belly out. You can feel it against the floor. And then Pulling your heel towards your bum, take this hand away, 
Do it like this, foot spring away. And then you try and lift this knee up and hold it. Lift it and hold it, lift it and hold it. And three, two, one, dropping down. So that lifting of the knees, hip extension, so we're back to this hip stuff. If you practice that with a straight leg, you'll feel how heavy that hip extension is for this bum muscle. So you lift, that bum muscle tenses, you lift, that bum muscle tenses. Okay, let's go into this the other side. And remember, you've got the option to do this standing as well. If standing works better for you. You can curl this heel up, grab hold of it, and sit in your stretch. Push your hips down into the floor. And keep breathing here. Remember the difference between internal rotation as you swing your heel out, external as you bring your heel across. You will know the feeling because we're all different. I can't tell you what the right way is. We're looking for something that stretches the muscles down the front of your thigh. There's somewhere that sits just right for you. And if I pull my heel in towards the midline of my body a bit, that's my slot. My little slot where it works is different to yours and that's okay. Breathe. living in it, try and persuade your body that this is something that you can do, and then load it up, just push your foot into your hand and your hand into your foot, and then fight against each other, keep fighting, and keep pushing, keep fighting, keep pushing, keep fighting, keep pushing, hold it, hold it, hold it, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, going five, four, three, two, one, and then pull your heel towards your bum, let go with your hand, bring this hand down, and then try and lift your knee and feel the muscles in your bum, muscles in your hamstring. Lift this foot and lift it and lift it and lift it. Going three, two, one. Straighten it out. And then feel this hip extension. So as you point the toes and lift this, make the bum muscle and the hamstring turn on. And understand that's hip extension. That's what pulls you forwards when you walk. It's part of the team for locomotion. Then coming back up onto your knees, onto all fours. We'll do a little bit of cat cow. Now, I want to see just your lower back move. So that means you push your chest up, tuck your chin, and move only lower back like this. So see how my middle of my back isn't really moving? I'm just tuning in, just lower back means I'm making my pelvis move and my hip socket is staying put but it's shifting because you imagine my hip tucks under so my tailbone tucks under my hip becomes more at this angle and the legs are going straight down from there so I come down like this my lower back's bent here my hip is tilted this way this crease in the hip socket has started to happen I'm moving my lower back around my hips now Get very complicated but I'm going to do my best to get you to understand it. I want you to reach one foot back just a little bit, have your toe on the floor and tense your bum and then just move lower back while this bum muscle is tensed. And it's so hard so you might need to really tune in how to make that happen. Oh, it's exhausting and it's an ab exercise because as you come down into cow pose like this for lower back you contract this stuff it's muscles in your belly that are feeding this so let's try that again with the bum muscle on bring your hands down reach this foot back tense your bum as hard as you can and make lower back shift like this it might be that you don't get much movement but it's something that you have to tune in and learn. Oh, I'm not as good on this side as I am the other. Oh, there we go. So hard. And then we'll come round in seated. Oh, we'll do a little hip stretch. So for the outside of your bum. So if you sit with one leg out in front, and put your other foot over the other side of your thigh. Now this is the easy option. If you grab hold 
of this thigh with your hand, and your arm like this, so it runs down your thigh. Your other hand reaches behind you, and you sit up as tall as you can. You pull this knee across your body a bit, until you find this stretch here. We're going to hold this for a fair amount of time, so you can shuffle, you can move, you can work out what's working for you. If you can't get into this position for whatever reason, you could try it like this, where you grab hold of your foot, grab hold of your ankle, and you pick this up towards your chest. That might work better for you because you don't have the rotation in your torso. If you're good for it, this is the slightly harder version, is to tuck this bottom leg underneath you like this, grab hold of this leg, pull it across your body and sit up tall. Shoulders down, keep looking for this stretch here. And just breathe and hang out. And even this bottom leg is doing work, it's doing the same kind of stretch as this. Breathe and see if you can rotate your chest more happily. Okay, in a little bit, we're going to start loading this up a tiny bit. But for now, it's just passive. What we'll always need for me, if you do just a passive stretch, you need to back it up with some control. Otherwise, you don't persuade your body anything. If you did it enough, eventually you would get some kind of change, some kind of adaptation from your body. But that adaptation tends to be a bit empty because you just passively pull your joints into shapes that feel stretches. There's no input. There's no way for you to use that new mobility that you've got because there's no input to push and pull out of it. So I like the movement. I like the connection, the like digging in and trying to find a little bit more strength. Breathe. Start pushing your knee into this arm. So this arm here, you're going to push your knee this way into this arm. And you should be able to feel this stuff here load up and push. Load it up and push. Load it up and push. Getting stronger, getting stronger. Going three, two, one. There we go. Bring this hand on the inside of your knee and push this hand into your knee. You need to your hand. So I'm trying to push my knee towards the camera and my knee's trying to fight back to push away from the camera. Going three, two, one, and grab hold again and just hold yourself in this stretch. Cool. And swing out and go to the other side. So if I straighten out this left leg, bring this right leg over, and you've got the option of having this leg straight, you grab hold of it and you sit in it like this. Slightly harder option, sit like this. But you've got the version where you just sit with your leg out straight and you cradle that leg, if that's what you need to do. Grab hold of this, and rotate. Some bum muscles try and sit on the floor. Live in this. Trying to persuade your body, lengthening down the outside of this hip is going to help you to be able to move around better so you can get stronger and get better at movement. That's what we want. I want you to improve. I want you to gradually improve. It's, there's no, very rarely is there any huge eureka moments. It's exciting when there are because it happens occasionally, but it's this small little movements, small little movements in the right direction. So we get a bit stronger, a little bit at a time. Breathe. There's blue skies out there today. It's nice. Okay. Start loading this up now. So you push your knee into your arm and your arm into your knee. So I'm fighting against it. I'm trying to fight my knee this way. My hand's pulling it back. Hold, hold, hold. Now, bring this hand onto the inside of my knee and I'll start fighting it this way. Keep fighting and holding, fighting and holding. And three, two, one. Yes. And then come out and come back up into standing. And just have a little check in because we've just done a load of work, work on hips and stretches on all the way around this hip, really. I want you to point your one foot forward. You've got internal rotation, squeeze it. Then external rotation, squeeze it. 
internal, external, internal, external. And this movement, this rotation, gives your leg room to move. It helps share the load out. If you only ever like squeeze into one thing or if you let it go passively into internal rotation to find stability, then you're missing out on using these muscles. If these muscles are weak, then your lower back will probably have to pick up the slack. Probably. Not necessarily, but probably. Breathe, move, breathe, move. Okay, try that on the other side. Point your toes. Turn that knee out, turn that knee across, turn that knee out, turn that knee across. Oh, so come on, left leg. It's so much harder for me to tune into this. Breathe. Nathan's boiling. Breathe. So you move, move, move. Feel the muscles in your bum grip on. If you've got a bit of strength, that's it. Go. And then, let's see if you can do that with load. So this gets kind of harder to understand, but if you put your left, uh, let's say right foot forwards, mirror me like this. So right foot, bend this knee, grab hold of your pelvis and internally rotate this hip, which means this hip comes across your body and you turn your body out across this standing foot and then you open it out and you turn your hips this way. Turn your hip in, turn your hip out. This back foot is helping you with balance trying to feel these rotations here and how your foot reacts, how your knee reacts, dictates what you do in life and it's all going to be different. Mine might look like I've got hold of this easily but it's easy when you teach this stuff because you talk about it and you work out ways to be able to get people to get better at this closed chain hip rotation. swap legs, this foot goes back, you turn this hip across and turn it out. So think about it, I've got hold of my pelvis, I'm turning my pelvis in, turning my pelvis out, turn my pelvis in, and turn my pelvis out. I'm looking for these feelings of hitting the end, but I can't get any further. If I do want to get further, then my knee starts collapsing in. I feel vulnerable here. I don't feel sore. I feel like if I keep pushing my luck there, then I might hurt myself. And that's where you have to work out where your limit is. But we're adding control to all of these shapes, and it'll get tiring for this hip. That's it. The last one. There we go. And then. Let's do the only movement that we haven't done for our hips is uh, abduction like this. So I want you to balance and you can cheat, you can hold on to something if you want. I want you to point your toes, lift this foot out and bring it back in. And your lower back is separate from this. I'm going to feel this right on the outside of your hip, bring it out, bring it in. I'm going to bring this back round to more yoga -y style stuff in a second. But you're trying to tune into how this hip performs at doing a sidestep. This standing leg has a little bend in it, so I know that you can do um, knee stability, you can do foot stability. A couple more. Last one. Perfect. Then come over to the other foot. Bring your hand onto the sofa. Bring this foot out, bring it in, bring it out. A little soft bend in this standing leg. That's it. Feel this stuff on the outside of your hip. one. Cool. And then wide feet, tense your bum and feel like these muscles here aren't part of it but they are. <laughs> they should be but they shouldn't feel it because you've got gravity, you've got structure, you've got all of this stuff to lean on and your skeleton to lean on. But these muscles don't have to grip on to be able to do this stuff unless you try and push your feet wider and then you'll feel them start to grip. I want these muscles to be as strong as you are flexible on the inside of your thighs. So maybe you can come down into a forward fold, bring your fingertips onto the floor. If you're not flexible enough for that, if you can't quite reach the floor, you can put hands on the sofa. We're going to, to reach our feet out until we find a little groin stretch. So after this groin stretch here, 
you go wide feet, you've got your hands on the floor, hands on the sofa, I'm just going to stay upright so you can um, hear me talk. So, as you go wider and we find this stretch in our groin, I want you to try and tense your bum muscles. I want you to try and push your toes down, have your toes pointing out a little bit, so you might need to shuffle them out a bit, so your toes point kind of diagonally forwards. And try and turn those knees out and tense your bum and keep in this hamstring stretch. And maybe see if you can go any further, any further, any further, any further. And then just hang out, you breathe, you keep hanging out, you breathe. So in three, two, one, and then walk your feet in towards each other. And drop yourself back onto the sofa. And we'll go through a little seated Shavasana. So Shavasana normally, we lie on our back and we close our eyes and we breathe. I'm going to see if I can get you to do this seated. It's a little bit of easy meditation to follow. So it's in my voice. So it's not a particularly yogury voice, it's not very really whispery. There's no music. It's just me guiding you through how to focus and how to attach your brain to just one task at a time. So if you relax your jaw, relax your tongue, close your eyes, just breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your nose. These don't need to be deep breaths. Slow them down. You're only breathing as much as you have to. Try not to rush it. You're going to practice just focusing on one task at a time. That task is breathing. You need to notice everything about it. Notice what shape your body is in. Notice how you make yourself breathe. How your breathing apparatus joins in. The muscles around your belly, around your rib cage, your intercostal muscles. All those muscles that can help you to bring in oxygen to level out carbon dioxide in your blood. And you're just breathing. There's no disruptions, no interactions with anything else apart from breathing. Humans are good at juggling tasks. We can do so many different things at the same time. We can pour our attention and effort into loads of different things at the same time. And that's definitely a good skill. But right now, we're just practicing being able to just pour your attention into one thing one thing only. And it's just breathing. And that's it. And every distraction that sneaks in can happily be acknowledged and pushed to one side as you just focus on the one task and get better at it. It doesn't have to just apply to breathing your task is, whatever it is that you're doing, with a bit of practice you can get good at just giving that one task all of your attention, no distractions. And just see if you can sit really still and just follow your breath. Bring your palms together. Bring your thumbs to your forehead and tuck your chin and roll forwards. Namaste. There we go. That was the senior yoga. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. As always, let me know what you've got going on. Let me know what you're struggling with, what you're good at, what you enjoy. And work it out. We'll add it in. We'll keep working on it. And I'll keep on checking in with you guys and making sure that you're all good and you're happy with your practice. And if there's something that you want to improve, let me know. I'll do my best to help you out. All right. I hope it's sunny where you are. Enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you all so much. I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone.